It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Um, in, in the midst of this government shutdown, it, what is it over? It's over border security. And in the midst of border security, you know, being on the minds of politicians and families, uh, we have yet again another preventable murder where we have a, uh, a Mexican illegal alien uh, suspected of killing a California police officer uh, a day after Christmas. This, was, uh, this man was a husband and a father of a five-month-old baby boy. And um, we're going to talk right now with uh, Maria Espinoza. She's back with us. She's the national director of the Remembrance Project, uh, an organization trying to get the word out and making sure we remember those who are murdered by illegal aliens. Maria, welcome back. Uh, Hello, Paul. Thanks so much for having me on, and a Happy New Year. Hopefully this next year will be a lot better than last. I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree, Maria. And every it seems like every time i have you on there's another one of these stories and i am mm-hmm. it's so frustrated it's like how many more deaths are we going to see in the headlines before we get serious about border security well you know and we have another um killing um as, as you mentioned officer Singh there in california and fortunately his killer was captured you know a cold-blooded killer i uh, hear there on the loose and you know I was on the loose for a few days in California but I'm so glad that the authorities are also prosecuting his brothers who assisted him in escaping and evading authorities for for several days mm-hmm. but you know um, Paul we have another killing that, um, that just took place yesterday in Knoxville Tennessee the young man Pierce Kennedy Corcoran, who is also the son of the Knoxville Fire Department's fire chief. Um, he was 22 years old, killed in a head-on collision by an illegal alien, crossed over the line and hit uh, the vehicle head-on. Uh, Pierce Kennedy Corcoran passed away. The passenger he had with him, his girlfriend Jade, did survive. But you're right. That's the big question. How many more American lives are these politicians willing to sacrifice for an illegal alien to have a so-called a better life? But as you know, you know, uh, foreigners have left their jobs in their country, left their families, their children to come here because they think they can freeload off the American taxpayer. Hmm. Yeah, you know, and I was just talking about this um you know, in the last hour, how we are creating new responsibilities uh, that we say the government owes us. And at the same time, we are abdicating the chief reason for government, which is to have borders and and control who comes here. And I just, I find that to be fascinating that we have a lot of millennials specifically that think it's somehow heartless and that we lack compassion when we want to have a wall, we want to stop illegal immigration. And and it, apparently it is not even, we're not even supposed to question the the motives of families that are coming here. We're not even supposed to question whether or not they're good parents for dragging some of their children through very, very harsh conditions. Maria. You're, you're absolutely right, Paul. And you know, if it was an American citizen who put their children in harm's way and neglected their children in the, in the manner that these foreigners have, uh, we would be prosecuted, and we certainly would be separated from them. Um, we would be jailed if that is the um, the punishment, but we should, should uh, would certainly be separated. And look how many Americans who commit crimes who are imprisoned, and they have families, uh, you know, so... The, you cannot apply what they are saying, uh, these millennials, and what the far left uh, liberals are promoting. You cannot apply it to, um, it doesn't even make sense. And how it's um, taken on with the millennials, is, is that it's really sad, but it also shows you how bad the educational system is here and what the, prop, the propaganda that they're putting into our children's heads. And they are our future. You know, the Department of Education, not to get off too far into the weeds here, but that should be eliminated here in the federal government. It should be 
left to the state as it was originally intended. We didn't have a Department of Education until 1979, and it's almost $60 billion uh, department. So I think we could do a much more like the walls to protect our country rather than uh, manipulating and brainwashing our children with the far left propaganda. Yeah, and that is certainly in the, the mainstream media is doing a great job reinforcing uh, the education that they are getting right now. Again, we're talking with Maria Espinoza, the National Director of the Remembrance Project. So uh, we're in a partial government shutdown. Uh, me and my uh, producer, Joe Maria, we've got kind of a, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a, not a really a bet. I think we're both in agreement. We think Donald Trump will go for the uh, the record here, the longest government shutdown uh, on record. Um, they're supposed to be meeting today. There's a presentation from Homeland Security. The Democrats are invited. They don't seem interested in negotiating. How far should the president take this to get border security? Well, we're talking about a national security issue here. So how far should the commander-in-chief go to protect what he ha- is his responsibility? It rests on his shoulders as well. How far will he go? And I think a lot of it will depend on all of your listeners and friends and family and everyone out there, you know, the com- people with common sense who love this country and understand what's at stake here, you know, take all of us to rise up and make our voices heard because that's what's going to take power. Look, we held a majority in the Senate and the House, and we had a, an America First have an America First president, and yet these politicians absolutely refuse to protect our families, the average American citizen, that's what's at stake here. The the safety and the ability to be able to run a business in a safe community where we you know, all live, work, and play. So I think President Trump should, should, should my goodness, I can't speak this morning, should certainly you know, do what he needs to do and just continue with the government shutdown hey this is a great way to weed out those jobs that we don't we we do not need and get rid of some of that debt right hey you know you would hope so although i think that they're uh, i think that they're furloughed so so every so all the people who are affected by this i think we end up paying it anyway but but uh, i you agree do. i agree with the sentiment um so let me let me ask you this the president has said many times he'll use the military to build the wall now, predictably, if he does this, the left is going to have a cow, especially it'll be very similar to them really disparaging our troops for pulling out their own MAGA hats and asking the president to sign them over the holidays. I thought that was <laughs> amazing how they attacked our, our troops and our service members who were j- really they're just jealous that, you know, the, the troops in the military support President Trump and, and his ideology. It seems more more so than the, the leftist ideology. Um but if he uses the military to build the wall, Maria, it's immediately going to get tied up in court, right? Well, look, he, he can um, declare a national emergency and place the, uh, the troops there. We have, what, a 15,000-member caravan, at, an additional caravan. This will be the third caravan, Paul, coming up from um, Mexico and Central America. So, so this is what he's preparing for. So, I, I mean, I would love for some of these buses that are coming into our country from Mexico to land and park right outside of Pelosi and Schumer and Paul Ryan and even Mitt Romney now because it looks like he, that one of those haters is, are rising up and nipping at President Trump. Um, you know, I mean, their homes are well protected. Their families are well protected. Their property is well protected. Because they are politicians. They're not living out here in, in the communities um, like the rest of us are. So if they love these foreigners and illegal aliens because they're not illegal until they cross over, so uh, let's call what the are, these caravanners, you know, why aren't they inviting them into their homes and, you know, shopping next to them and their children sitting next to them in, in their schoolrooms? So, you know, it's good for the rest of us but not for them. So President Trump certainly needs to do whatever he needs he can within his power. And every single politician, regardless of your party affiliation, should be for protecting America's children, for protecting America, period. So I say do it what, what it takes at this point because it's obvious that he's not going to get the support from his even his own party. Like, again, Speaker Paul Ryan, who was a complete, complete failure. Yeah. 
No, you're right, and uh, you know, I understand what you're saying about Mitt Romney. You know, he wrote an op-ed. We covered this last hour, wrote, writing an op-ed criticizing President Trump's character in the Washington Post of all publications. You know, you, you just get the feeling you've got Jeff Flake, who's now gone. You've got Bob Corker, who's now gone, and it looks like Mitt Romney is going to be the, the virtue signaler uh, in chief, you know, and he's going to attempt to... Uh, he'll never make it. Yeah. Right, he'll n never make it. He doesn't have the courage and the spine that President Donald Trump has. And, you know, I mentioned Speaker Paul Ryan. You know, he ran away from four angel mothers, Paul, and wouldn't even listen to their story so that maybe he could make better decisions. So this is what we have here. And then we have these Hollywooders who are you know, championing and taking up a torch for and fundraising for illegal aliens. You know, what about America's children? Mm -hmm. What about Officer Singh's family, his wife and his five-month-old son? You know, what about the young man, uh, Corcoran, who was just killed, held his family? You know, his father's a fire chief working hard, trying to make ends meet, raise his family. And here, our government is failing every single American, especially the angel moms, dads, uh -huh. and angel families that we work with at the Remembrance Project. Well, and, you know, one of the criticisms uh, back to Mitt Romney, Senator Mitt Romney now, uh, is that, you know, he's really attacking Trump from a globalist perspective. And I have to point out here, Maria, I've done this a couple times now, if you look at the uprisings across the globe uh, from developed nations, uh, the Yellow Vest protests, and, and others, they're pro they all have an immigration problem. I don't yeah. think that's a coincidence. I, I think there is a concerted effort to 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 have there's some agenda. Glo it is a globalist agenda, no question, to have open borders and for countries to lose their sovereignty and not have the ability to 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 uh, you know control who comes into your country. And so you look across the globe, everybody's having the same problems. And uh, right. people want to say globalism isn't a real thing. No, it is real. And, uh, and you know, in fact, I believe that is also one of the reasons why the Remembrance Project is still around. Because, yes, we are a voice for the victims. And we've done more for the families, you know, created a chaplaincy group and crisis intervention group. We've, we're also battling in the courts. We filed two amicus briefs in the two top. Um, hottest issues, of course, I illegal immigration, uh, pushing back on Obama and um, supporting trying to stop the illegal um, per, uh, temporary permanent uh, protection, uh, TPS, um, you know, that Obama again pushed through. So we're doing that as well. But also, you know, Paul, when we, as we worked with the Remembrance Project starting in 2009, you know, we realized that this wasn't just about sanctuary city policies in Houston, Texas, which is what really um, created, why we created the Remembrance Project after learning about these policies, dangerous policies. And now we're, you know, we've learned so much more that this is a global push to ruin our country. You look down to the south and even in some places in Europe, like you mentioned, in developed nations, they're having the same problem. In 2013, my husband, Tim Lee, and I were sitting in a hearing where Janet Napolitano was going to speak on immigration, um, there was a young lady to the left of us who was from Germany and to the right from Italy. They were both there to see what America was going to do about their illegal immigration problem. They are having the same thing as ruining their country. And you're right, you, you mentioned you know the yellow vest. Um, so take a look at Paris. Um, this is a... a concerted effort, intentional effort, and um, very deliberate to ruin our country. And it has, um, as I learned probably back in 2012 in Houston at a, a li very liberal peace and justice summit, that there are ties to other countries. So international interests, they want to come and take over and ruin America. So this, is, this isn't just about... Uh, our little, you know, what we see out our front door here. This is an intentional effort to ruin mm. our country. Maria Espinoza, National Director of the Remembrance Project. It's always great to have you on. I hope you have a happy new year, and uh, we'll continue to follow all of this uh, in this partial government shutdown. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, please, please do. Thanks so much, Paul. And please give our website out because we do want people to come and join us and gather and 
be a stronger voice and and rise up. So yes. God bless you and thank you for a happy new year. Yes, yes, ma'am. You you too. It's the Remembrance Project uh, dot org, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to make sure I have that right. Actually, um, is it is it? Yeah, it's the Remembrance Project dot org.